Hi, welcome back. I am Piyush. This is part of the videos on mechanics of forecasting methods. Initially, this was supposed to be a set of five videos on the different methods and the methods of accuracy. This is a slight deviation on telling you a little bit more about moving average and that's why we have called it video 1A. So the five videos are on moving averages, exponential smoothing, trend lines, seasonal indices and measures of accuracy. Uh, like we all already said that moving averages, if you see the point B, is not suitable if there are trends or seasonality in the data. But we want to explore that point a little bit more. Uh, let's look at this data here. Now the first set of data which has been highlighted is a pure trend. So the demand in the first period is 34, 36. It's increasing by two units every time. Let us suppose I create a three month moving average. Okay, three month um, moving average. Um, let me copy this format so that it looks better. All right, three month moving average. So the average for the fourth month is the forecast for the fourth month I'm sorry is equal to the average of the previous three months and then I will increase the font size to 14 so that makes it easier to see uh, you might zoom it to full screen so that um, you get a better view of the numbers now when I've copied the formula what we see is that the forecast for the fourth month is lesser than the actual of the fourth month by four units and we see the same behavior throughout now 46 is lesser than 50 by four units so what's happening when the, there is an increasing trend the forecast is lower than the actual trend always right and the same case will be if we have a decreasing trend so again the three month moving average let me copy this and paste it here and I can even copy and paste these formulas here. Doesn't matter. Uh, what we see here is it's 106 and this is 112. It's higher by 6. This is again higher. This is again higher. So by 6 units always. So what we see in an increasing trend, this is an increasing trend, the forecast is lesser than the trend continuously. And in a decreasing trend, the forecast is higher than the trend continuously. So that's why we make this statement that the moving average forecast, the, it lags the trend always. Uh, having said this, let's look at a new set of data to understand the application better. Now, this is a random set of data. Let's plot this data. So the demand, I plot it, the 50 data points. Um, I plot them, I go to insert and plot a line chart. Uh, wow, this is random data. We don't cannot make sense of it in any way. Uh, we don't know if this is a trend, is randomness. So to make sense of it, I um, we take a 10 period moving average. So in 10th period, we take a moving average. So this is um, this is not a forecast. This is a 10 period um, moving average. Uh, so in the 10th period, uh, we put an average equal to average of the first 10 periods, bracket closed, and we copy this formula here. And we change the axis so that uh, it's easier to see and make sense. Fixed it at 30, and say OK. So yeah, the y axis now starts from 30. Now let me increase, let me bring this new set of moving average into our data. And the first thing when I bring it into the data, yes, this red line, we now see that the red line is definitely showing an increase. So while when we had the individual data points, we could not spot this increase. There was a lot of random variations. When we created a 10 period moving average, these variations are smoothed out and the pure trend emerged. So what we see here in this data, which is a random data with trend, that it does have a trend in spite of the randomness and this trend is clearly visible because of the average, the moving average that we calculate. 
So while we said that moving average methods lag the trend, but the moving averages help us identify the trend. Thank you for watching the video. Please share it and do like it if it helped you. Thank you.